All right. Welcome to Coffee with Marcus and Mark, the number one stock market show on Spotify and one of the most popular market updates on YouTube. In this show, we talk about what's happening in the markets and how we're trading them. Today is Monday, March 25th. Stocks have a winning week last week, but they dropped to start the short trading week this week. Intel falls after problems in China. What's in store for us this week? Plus, we'll review two new WTF, win the fear trades, and our open wheel positions. As you can see, there's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. If this is your first time here, my name is Mark Hodge. I'm head coach at Rockwell Trading, and today I will be running the, the show by myself. So uh, Marcus will be back here on Wednesday. Let's go ahead and get started and call it Coffee with Mark today. So let me go ahead and share my screen here and let's take a look at the S&P 500. The S&P 500, pulling back a little bit today, down a tiny bit on Friday, but a really nice uh, end of the week last week, So, uh, or a full week altogether, because the S&P finished higher on a weekly chart at record highs. Look at this, up 2. 3% for the week. If we look at the Dow, the Dow also having an outstanding week last week up 2%. And the NASDAQ having a great week up almost 3% for the week. And if we go back to a daily chart, we see that even though we pulled back just a little bit, uh, you know, still sitting up there near highs, S&P 500 above the 5,200 mark. And if we go to a five minute chart, we could see that we Kicked off the week with some losses, gapping down just a tiny bit compared to where we ended the day on Friday. Went sideways and looks like we're attempting to push higher and fill the gap again after that attempt failed uh, early on in the morning session. But right now, the S&P down just seven points, a tenth of a percent, it looks like we might be uh, making a move higher. Now the Dow is flat moving sideways down 0.3%. So a uh, lackluster session so far for the Dow. The NASDAQ actually uh, getting up there, almost filling that gap and making another move higher, just like the S&P. The NASDAQ early on down a little bit more. And some of this coming due to some semiconductor news and in particular intel and amd so we'll take a look at those two stocks but before we do let's go over to power x optimizer and see what's coming out this week looking at the economic calendar we did have new home sales reported today uh, but as far as red flag reports go the more significant reports that could move the market tomorrow consumer confidence coming in at 7 a.m pacific that's 10 a.m eastern time and a red flag report might move the market. Maybe on Wednesday, we see that Fed member Waller is uh, flagged as a red flag report. So 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, sorry, uh, Pacific and 6 p.m. Eastern. So that report or not report, but his speech and, and commentary coming after the bell. But something to keep an eye on, something to watch could be a market mover, especially for the next day. Now, on Thursday, March 28th, we have some pre-market reports, 5.30 a.m. Pacific, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. We have final GDP. We have weekly unemployment claims. Now, is this a big market mover? I mean, you never know if there's something that's a surprise. Pending home sales at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern. Uh, pending home sales, we see revised University of Michigan consumer sentiment. So a couple of red flag reports. The biggest of the week is going to be core PCE price index. On Friday. Now, this is a little interesting because we will not know what the market reaction is until Monday because Friday is a market holiday. Uh, sometimes traders want to know, hey, what are the market holidays? And we put this into PowerX Optimizer to make it simple. We see Good Friday is a US market holiday. So markets are closed on the 29th, and the next uh, holiday would be uh, Memorial Day on Monday, May 27th. So it is a short week, four trading days this week, and the biggest report of the week actually coming out when markets are closed. So we'll have to wait until Monday to see exactly how the market responds to that important inflation data report. The Fed says that that is their favorite 
uh, report when it comes to inflation. And we'll just have to wait and see how the market responds. But in the meantime, there's a lot going on this week. And uh, we had a few opportunities that we considered today, which we will take a look at. Before we do, though, let's pop over here and look at Intel. So INTC is the ticker symbol. And let's go to a daily chart here. Actually, that five-minute chart was just as revealing. We opened lower today. Uh, on Friday, we closed higher, and we opened lower by almost 4% here. So Intel taking a little bit of a beating, but look at this coming right back. That's what we saw on a five-minute chart, almost closing that gap here, and now down just 1.3%. Why is Intel down? Well, there was a report that new China guidelines will block Intel chips in government servers and computers. This also had a potential impact on AMD. It sounds like they were also part of that block. AMD, on the other hand, uh, did open lower, but is now up 1.1% for the session. So it looks like investors are really shaking off this news. Maybe not a big deal, uh, but it did lead the market to uh, or these stocks to be opening lower. And nice to see that they've uh, clawed back those losses and are now uh, moving higher with AMD positive and Intel still down, but well off of session lows. Now let's go back to PowerX Optimizer and let's look at the heat map here. And if we look at the S&P 500, let's uh, try this one more time. Let me refresh. <clears throat> Because there is some uh, red in the market today, even though we're trying to figure out where, if we're positive or negative, moving higher there. There is some red in some of the bigger names. Green uh, up in oil and gas. So oil and gas positive for the session. NVIDIA up 2%. Microsoft down 1%. Apple down almost 1%. We'll take a look at Apple in a little bit as well. Google down 1%. Meta down just shy of a percent. Amazon slightly positive. So uh, the red tends to be in software uh, and in tech, uh, the green in oil and gas today. Uh, drug manufacturers seem to be doing all right and in the green as well. But I want to take a look at United Airlines here. And let's go back to trading view. Look at United. Gapping down, right now down 4.5%, coming off of session low. So uh, not as bad as it was. United taking some heat from the FAA after a series of safety incidents. The FAA is uh, saying that they are considering what actions to take, which could include limiting new routes or routes for the airline. Uh, so this uh, not good for United. Relatively speaking, when we look at the overall chart here, not that big of a deal, but uh, definitely taking a hit after making highs uh, for the year, uh, new highs for the year on Friday, uh, a closing high of the year on Thursday, pulling back now uh, almost 4.5% here on the news. Now, Boeing, on the other hand, definitely taking a hit recently was up nicely at the open after announcing that their CEO, uh, is it David Calhoun? Uh, let me see my, my notes here. Yeah, Dave Calhoun. Uh, he is going to step down at the end of the year and investors liking this. So after a series of incidents with Boeing and uh, making lows for the year last week, uh, rallying back midweek last week, Today, opening higher, still positive for the session, up just under 1%. Uh, but some of that enthusiasm seems to have fizzled because we did start the day uh, much higher here, up uh, almost 4% and now just under 1%. So uh, maybe a profit-taking opportunity or a little bit of an overreaction to the upside there uh, that investors or short-term traders are saying, hey, let's... Uh, Let's take some profits or maybe this isn't as good as we want it to be because there's still some e issues to address. And if people think that the issues were tied to the CEO, he's still going to be there 
uh, for the remainder of the year and another eight, nine months, right? So we'll, we'll see here. Now, talking about scrutiny and, and uh, issues with a stock, Apple, Apple, seeing a big drop last week because of the uh, lawsuit that was filed by the Department of Justice. And some of this priced in and expected, but investors not liking that news. On Thursday, Apple was down 4%. Marcus took a wheel trade and he sold the 170 put that expired on Friday. And this did expire worthless. Apple today gapping down. And right now, even though there was a little more downside, staying right around where we opened the session. We opened the session at 170.73. Right now we're at 170.47. So a little bit lower, uh, but still some more downside here for Apple. So what does this mean for Apple? Is this a big deal? Is it uh, much ado about nothing? And I mean, this is where I, I think it's definitely a notable event and it's something to be aware of, a little more risk potentially with Apple, but Apple isn't going anywhere. And Microsoft has also taken some heat from the uh, DOJ. Uh, Facebook, Meta has taken some heat. There's other big names, Google, Amazon. And so I think at, at some point this is a little bit overdone, uh, but definitely something to be aware of and, and to really think about to decide if this is a buying opportunity for you or not. Is it a buying opportunity for us? Is it something that we're going to trade this week? Let's first look at WTF trades. If we go back to PowerX Optimizer here and we go to the WTF Analyzer, uh, we see here that we have two new open signals uh, or two new signals to open a, a new trade. So two new buy signals. AMT this morning, an opportunity to buy both Marcus and I traded this one. And uh, we opened up at 193.69. Right now we're trading at 195.25. So a real nice quick move higher in AMT and it's working out perfectly. Now, CTSH, also a new buy signal. And the signal was to buy today at the open. It opened up at 72. That's the price that Marcus and I were filled because we did take this trade. And for anybody following along, we were in this trade up until Friday. On Friday, we were stopped out. Our first stop out of the year with the WTF strategy. So just to put it into perspective, the signals that Marcus and I have looked at, and uh, there were some that he passed on, and uh, there were one or two that he took that I didn't get a fill on. But the, the signals that we traded this year based on the WTF analyzer, there were 30 trades that Marcus and I either took uh, together or that we identified separately. Of those 30 trades, there were 25 wins and five losses. So a winning percentage of 83.3%. Not bad. There were five losses, but on Friday, CTSH was the first stop out of the year. So the strategy is working great. And I would say that over time, I would expect about a 70% winning percentage. Uh, so at 83%, we're outperforming, but I'll take it. No complaints there. And this morning with a valid buy signal, we got into this one. Right now it's up and um, so... Uh, we'll, we'll see where we end the day and, and if this continues to move out higher and we get a nice rebound here, a nice winning trade. But that's the goal. The goal is to focus on these signals. The strategy is working out great. We continue to trade it. And it's been an outstanding year for the win the fear strategy. So we are continuing to trade it and two new signals for today. Uh, so that's the WTF strategy and the two stocks that we traded, AMT and CTSH. Let's talk a little bit about the wheel. So the wheel strategy, and let's first look at CSIQ. So CSIQ flirting with the initial reaction that we had back in November on this earnings release uh, where there was a big drop and quick, quick recovery. Now we're getting right back down to those levels. Does that mean we need to get out of CSIQ? No, but it also doesn't mean that I'm happy with how CSIQ is moving. Uh, but it, this seems to still be more of an industry issue, not just uh, related to the individual stock. So if we look at today, 
CSIQ is down 1%, end phase is down 2%. Uh, if we if we look at some others, SEDG, we see that, okay, SEDG negative for the day, but 0.2% uh, not as bad. Uh, but long story short, we're just seeing, uh, let's look at first solar, FSLR. Okay, so kind of all over the place today, slightly positive. But just in general, we know that solar has taken a beating and some of this due to higher yields. And uh, when yields are higher and interest rates are higher, then financing solar becomes less attractive because instead of being able to pay off your investment in seven years, it might take 20 years. And those are not exact numbers, but it's the, the problem. Uh, that you're dealing with when you make an investment where from a sales perspective, you can say, hey, it's a no brainer because it pays for itself. Well, it takes a little bit longer to pay for itself because of higher rates. That's a harder sell. Um, and that's why there have been uh, some issues with uh, with a product being uh, you know stored or, or not sold. And um, also sales have come down a little bit, hoping that that environment changes, but it, it's more of a an industry issue right now. So Marcus and I, we're keeping an eye on this and we've talked about our rescue missions, which have worked out very well uh, in the past. And this is one where we did a partial rescue. We're considering it. We talked about it this morning with our mastermind group, uh, keeping an eye on it for right now. I have not made an add to this. So I've not added to it uh, beyond the, the first time I did a couple of months ago and we're watching it. We're watching it. So nothing to do with CSIQ. And right now, Marcus and I still have a position there. NEE working out nicely. We see that March was a fantastic month for NEE and up a little bit more today. Nice dividend payer. We still need it to move higher, but a pretty good looking move here. And now it's just getting through these highs and moving up a little bit more. UPS is another position that both Marcus and I have, and UPS working out nicely uh, after this earnings drop, just coming right back, looking for us to get through this 159 level and beyond. All right, now UPS at 156.15, essentially flat for the day. Marcus does have 157.50 calls that he sold that will end on Thursday, uh, since Friday is a holiday. And he also has, I think it's a 162.50. So he split those, got some nice premium on both. And uh, we'll see where they end up. Right now, UPS just sitting tight, getting back to Friday's close and still looking good. You want a new wheel trade? Well, if you do, please like this video. Give it a thumbs up. We love likes and uh, we're here to uh, hopefully provide you some uh, entertainment, insight and knowledge uh, so you can learn how we approach the markets, how we're trading the wheel strategy and how we're trading our WTF strategy and and how we're, we're tackling these crazy markets. And if you do appreciate the content and the videos and us being here pretty much every day, then please give us a like. So new trade. Apple. Marcus took another stab at Apple. Uh, he sold the 170 last week and it expired worthless. And today he said, you know what? I still like that 170 level. So Marcus sold the 170 put. He got a buck 60 on this one. So some really, really nice premium there. I think it was about 83% annualized, but I'm liking this trade. And, and actually, let's go back to PowerX optimizer and look at the wheel analyzer. I think it's always easier to use the software to get a, a really good perspective when we're actually trading. Uh, trading view is nice to just run through some charts and look at five minute bars and futures and stuff like that. But as far as the strategy goes, this is a beautiful looking chart here. We see that there's some support. We see that with the 170 right now, you could get a buck 33. So not as much as Marcus got, but even at a buck 33, at 70% annualized, the minimum to be at our 30% target. So our goal is to get at least 30% annualized when we sell puts or sell calls. And to get that 30% minimum, you just need 57 cents. So this is still a possibility. We're really trading right at that 170 level. So if you're selling the 170 strike and the stock's trading at 170.17, 
I, I think you have to anticipate assignment, right? You have to say, this is a price I want to own shares at. Well, you could just buy shares at 170.17, but why not sell a put? And if the stock goes nowhere, you are getting money, right? You're getting paid a buck, a buck uh, 33 in this example. If it falls a little bit, this buck 33 is still yours, right? If the stock closes below 170 on Thursday, since Friday is a holiday, uh, but typically we have Friday expirations. And if the stock closed below, then great. You you own shares at the price you want to own them anyway, but you got paid a little to take on that risk, right? So I love the idea if you want to get in at 170, start by selling a put. Why not get that big premium? Bring down your break even. It's essentially like buying the shares right now at 68.67, uh, 168.67 that is. Uh, so buying them at a discount from what they're trading right now, if if you get a sign. Now, I had a slightly different perspective on this because I think the 170 is a nice level. But looking back a little bit further, I like the 167.50 because the way that we've moved, we, we saw here that after this big rally, we started to pull back, started to pull back, you know, found some support around 175, found some support around 170. And then bottomed out around 167.50 before a nice rally up, coming back down to the 180 mark, and then this bigger drop here. So I decided I'm okay owning Apple. I know there's the DOJ stuff going on, but I'm okay owning Apple. I, I still like the company. I think even if we go into a period where there is a bigger drop, I can manage this perfectly and, and do a a rescue mission in a, in a way that makes sense and that I'm comfortable with. It's a stock that I'm okay owning. And so I decided that I would go with the 167.50. I got 85 cents, which I think was 43 or 48% annualized. I can't remember, uh, but it was definitely in the 40s. And I'm um, getting paid 83 cents or 85 cents, that is, to potentially own Apple at 167.50. We're not even there yet, right? So for me, I like the idea of owning it 250 cheaper. Doesn't mean that I'll get the opportunity to do so because if we stay above 167.50, I just keep that 85 cents a share in premium and I get paid to potentially own shares. But this is where we both think Apple's a solid company. We're both okay taking the risk. Marcus chose the 170. I decided to go with the 167.50. So that sums it up for our open wheel trades. And again, if you like the content here, if you like what we do uh, on YouTube with these videos, then please give the video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you know someone that can benefit from these fantastic videos, if I dare say so myself, then please share this video with someone who can benefit from it. I'm going to be back here tomorrow. And until then, happy trading, everybody.